12, 3 trigonometric functions and general angles. But let's call this what it really is, which is the unicircle. That's what this lesson is all about. And that lesson is the most important lesson of trig. So let's get into it. Before we did trig functions of any triangle, but now we're going to do trig functions of any angle. So no matter what angle I give you. So if we have like a chart here, 0, 180, 90, 270, and 360. Same thing with radians. We can find the trig function of any of these angles. The way it's going to work is generally going to draw this. be like a triangle. And what that means is this. Right, that's that's our angle. Opposite is right here. How much you go down? How much you go up and down on your y? Adjacent is right here. How much you go on your x? And then right here is the hypotenuse. A lot of times they write that as r, right? And then x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? The diagonal theorem. So if I want to find sine of this, sine of theta. It's opposite of hypotenuse, Sogatoa. Nothing changes. Good old Sogatoa is still here to help us. Right, so the sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so it'll be y over r. Will be adjacent of hypotenuse, so x over r. So cosine theta is x over r. And then tan toa, tan of theta is oa, opposite over adjacent y over x. So that's how we're going to find, no matter where I draw a little triangle at, no matter what quadrant it's in, it could be in the quadrant over here. We're going to draw a little triangle, go straight down, this will be opposite, this will be adjacent, and this will be hypotenuse. That's the way it's going to work. Now, like I said, this, called, this lesson is called a unit circle, and what that means is that the radius is going to be 1. So there's special cases when we're talking about the unit circle. And unit, right, means r equals 1. That has length of 1, unit. So in that case, when the radius is 1, we have sine theta equals y, cosine theta equals x. Tan's the same, but if you notice, tan is y over x, and y is sine, x is cosine. So tan, you could also say, is just sine over cosine. Now, some of you got to memorize. Really, I care less about this one right here. I need to divide by the radius. This is the one I really care about, sine and cosine. Sine is y, cosine is x. How do I remember that? Well, the key is first, you don't have to memorize one of them, because once you get one, you know the other is the other one. And what I do is I say sine. I know, stupid, but it works. Sine. Sine is y, cosine is x. Okay, so let's do an actual example. Now, this one is not a unit circle, so we're not going to do the r equals 1 thing. We're just going to do a problem. So the way we do these, when they want you to find all, when they want you to find all six trig points of a, of a point, they give you a point, is let's draw a triangle at the point. So we're going to do this. 6, negative 6, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 2. So something to that effect. That is negative 6, two again not a unit circle so then how do we draw a triangle well we always draw a triangle the same way which is you go to the x-axis straight down or straight up and you go to the you go to the origin so that's my crappy triangle the angle to the, from the to the origin right there is the angle we're talking about now we got final we got a list of sides now you went we went back six notice how we went backwards that's a negative six it says so even on the point right negative six you went to the left if you go to the left, it's negative. If you go down, it's negative. And like a normal graph, you go right, it's positive. You go up, it's positive. We went up 2, so positive 2. Now we have to find hypotenuse. So we got to do a quadratic formula. Unlike the Tin Man, this is a right triangle, so we can do it correctly. So a squared, b squared, c squared. So we get negative 6 squared. Remember, when you square negative, it's always positive. I'm going to get 36 plus 4 equals c squared. So c equals rad 40. I can actually break that down to be, let's see, what, 2 times rad 10? So, right, that's hypotenuse. And now if, they want all trig, if I want all six trig functions, it, that part's the easy part. If I want sine of theta, all we got to do is sogatoa. So, gatoa. Right, cosine, tan, 
sine is reciprocal of cosecant, cosine is reciprocal of secant, and tan is reciprocal of cotan. Right, so if I want sine, it says so katoa, opposite of hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse. So 2 over 2 rad 10. And again, you can leave it like that, you can reduce if you want, it's just 1 over rad 10, same, same deal. Cosine is adjacent, oh, it's negative in this case, negative 6 over the hypotenuse, 2 rad 10. And tan is opposite of adjacent, 2 over negative 6. Right, and if I want the reciprocal functions, all we do is do the reciprocal. Reciprocal of this is that. Reciprocal of sine is cosecant. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to cancel out the twos and just get rad 10. That's a radical 10. Sorry for the ugliness. Right, on this side, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to get 2 rad 10 over negative 6. I'm going to flip it and get negative 6 over 2, which is the same thing as negative 3. But again, you don't have to reduce. Right, and that's the general idea. Right, it's all about finding the six. Once you draw the triangle, it's just normal. We've been doing forever. So good, Toa. So let's do a couple more. So this first one here, one, two. So let me draw where one, two is, right? Here's one, one, two. So it's right there. And then we're going to go straight down and then make a triangle with the, with the origin. This is the angle we're talking about. Um, again, notice we went over one and we went up two. If I wanted to find the hypotenuse, a squared, b squared, c squared, it would be radical 5. And then you just do the six trig functions. It's getting a little tedious, I'm going to skip that part. I want to talk about this one and the next two, because they're a little more interesting. So this one's a negative 8 and negative 15. Um, I'm going to say that's a negative 8, and I'm going to say this is negative 15. Right, so negative 8 and negative 15 would be right here. And like I always say, right, go straight to the x-axis. So in this case, I've got to go up to the x-axis to make a right angle. And I'm going to go to the origin. Now, look, I know what my sides are. This is, I went left 8, so negative 8. And I went down 15, so negative 15. Remember, this is your angle. i got to find the hypotenuse. 15 squared plus 8 squared, so 225 plus 64. That is 289. Square root of 289, I think, is 17. So I'm going to put a 17 right there. Now, I do want to point out in this one, Notice I did not put a negative 17, even though it's on the bottom left. It's because the radius, or the radius, which is also the hypotenuse, is never is never negative. It's a distance. So we don't ever we never consider distance as negative. So this line here will always be positive. Always. These can be positive and negative depending on where you go. If you go up, positive, right, positive. If you go down or left, those are negative. But hypotenuse, always positive because it's a radius. And then again, here, we'll just do the, once you get that, you do the six trig functions. Okay, let's talk about this one right here. 0, negative 4. So 0, negative 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0, negative 4. Now, I can't draw a triangle here. Because remember, you're supposed to go straight to the origin. Actually, let me change that color so you can really see it. Right? So that's my point. i got to go straight to the origin. There's no triangle to draw. You don't go like this. That's not the way it works. Right? You have to go to the origin. You go to the x-axis and origin. In this case, that's one of the same. So there's no triangle in this case. This one's special. This is my x value and my y value. And now this is, where, this is where we use our formulas. Sine equals y over r. Cosine equals x over r. Tan equals y over x. In this case, right, I'm not going to use these yet because we're still not at a unit circle. This is not a length of 1. This is a length of 4. So in this case, our r is 4. So if I was doing sine, which is y over x, sine e, sine is y, so y over r, cosine is x, and sine is y, and tan is y over x, or sine over cosine. So in this case, sine is going to be the y value over the r value, which in this case is 4. So sine of theta equals negative 1. Cosine would be 0 over 4, which is 0. So cosine theta equals 0. And tan would be sine over cosine or y over x, which would be negative 4 over 0. And you can't divide by 0, so this is undefined. So that's how you do one when it lands on a... Anytime you land, we call those quadrantal angles. Anytime you land on a line, that's how we do it. It's y over x. And if it's not a unit circle, you have to use the r also. And so, hey, look, we just talked about this. Right, those are called quadrantal angles. They, that's when you fall on the axis. So you're going to fall on that line, or that line, 
or that line or that line. Those are done specially, right? So these are all done by doing sine e, cosine x, and tan is y over x, or sine over cosine. So again, that's the way we're going to do those. Unless it's a unit circle, then we could ignore the r's. And if I was going to do something, we did, hey, we did it already, but you go like this, that would be negative 2, 0. My r would also be just be 2. But I know, again, notice r, never negative, right? It's how far did you go? I went 2 to the left, right? So r is always positive. And you just plug them in, get the answers. Okay, so let's talk about what we're, here, we're all here to talk about, the unit circle. This is, this is it. Take a second, look at it, take it all in. So this is the unit circle, right? And the whole point of this is we have to know how to find every single value on here. And we're going to use it a lot this this semester, next year, when you're, whatever class you take next year, you're using calculus, you're using everything. You're going to have to know how to find every single value on here. Now I'm going to show you different ways to do it. And these ways, honestly, once you, once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. But either way you do, you have to do some memorization. Now, how does this work? Well, let's say I said I want to figure out what sine of 150 degrees is. So if you have the unit circle, like you say you memorize it, well, we're going to go 150 degrees right here. So we're looking at this thing right there. Sine E, right? Sine is the Y value. So you just look at the Y value. Sine 150 degrees is 1 half. Right? Same thing if I asked you, what is cosine of, let's see, 5 pi over 3. So I would go to cosine, I'll go to 5 pi over 3, which is right here. Cosine sine e is the y, cosine is the x value. So 5 pi over 3, you got the x value, which in this case happens to also be 1 half. <laughs> right? And then you're like, okay, how about tan? So tan, let's do tan of 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 is over here. Remember, tan is y over, y over x, sine over cosine. So you have to put the y value over the cosine value. So like negative 1 half over negative right 3 over 2, and then simplify it, stuff cancels out, you get this. And that's how the unit circle is going to work. So as you can kind of see, and the whole goal is I'm, I want you to be able to, I'm, I should be able to say, hey, what is sine of ln pi over 6? And you can tell me it's negative 1 half. Or what is cosine of pi over 2? And you got to know it's 0. Right, that's going to be the goal. One way to do it is just to memorize the unit circle. That's way one. So here's our different ways. So way one is just literally memorize it. Some people do it. It's never been my way. I, I can't. That's just too much for me. So what are some other ways? Well, I'm going to show you two other ways. I'm going to show you the table way, which requires a little bit of memorization, but everything you can do here is going to require a little bit of memorization. Um, but it's all about building a table. And once you build the first row of the table, which is actually kind of easy to do, then you just it's just it's actually not that bad. And I'm going to show you the way I actually do it, which is the triangle way. This is the way Fergosa does it. It's the way I was taught it. It's my favorite way of doing it, but some people it, it requires a couple of requires you to memorize some things also. So it's all it's, it's kind of a which are, which way do you learn best? Do you like to use a table? Or do you like to use a triangle? Or are you a freak and like to memorize things? So that's the goal. That's what we're gonna do, and let's just get started. So the way the table works is like this: we're gonna put sine, cosine, and tan up here. So it's going to go sine first, then cosine, and then tan. And here are the big angles we care about. So you can kind of see it right here. We're going to care about 0 degrees, and then we're going to care about 30 degrees, we're going to care about 45 degrees, and then 60 degrees, and 90. If you notice, these are also, when we talk about radians, right, the reference angle, these are also reference angles I only cared about, right? So this is in degrees. If I wanted radians, this would be pi over 6. <laughs> this would be 0. <laughs> this would be pi over 6. Right, pi over 6 has, always has a 30 degree reference angle. Small slice. Pi over 4. Pi over 3. And pi over 2. And again, that's just part of the table. If we're going to make a table, sine, cosine, tan, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. Right? It just goes up. And this is a radian measure. Again, no matter what you do, so there's some things you can, no matter how, which way you do it, you have to memorize. You have to know that 30 is pi over 6, 45 is pi over 4, 60 is pi over 3, 90 is pi over 2. Okay, let's go to the big part of the table. And that's this right here. 
the sign is the most important part. So we have to get sign down. So how does sign work? Well, first it's zero. And then it's one over two. Then it's two over two. And then it's three over two. And then it's gonna be one. Now, these are actually not corrected. It's rad three over two and rad two over two. But that's the way it goes. It's zero, one half, rad two over two, rad three over two, one. But that's how I memorized it. It's zero, and then one over two, two over two, three over two, and then one. Um, if you're wondering why these numbers come down, it's actually, these are all radical. It's radical zero over two, which is zero. Rad one over two, which is one over two. Rad two over two, rad three over two. And then this would supposed to be rad four over two, which is just two over two, which is one. But instead of going through all that work, we had to, it's memorized zero, one half, two, two over two, three over two, then one. If you could get that down, you have the table memorized. Because that is the hardest part of the table. But if you get that down, then it's the rest of it's easy. Because once you have that, cosine is this flip of it. If you notice, sine and cosine switch. So cosine is just flip it upside down. One, rad three over two, rad two over two. One half and zero. Tan, don't forget tan is sine over cosine, y over x. So you just put sine over cosine. Zero over one is zero. One half over rad three over two, little trick, the twos cancel. You get one over rad three. Some people call it some people rationalize it, but I don't care. Rad two rad two over two times rad two over rad two over two cancels out, you get one. Rad three over two over one half, the twos cancel out again. You just get rad three. And one over zero you can do. It's undefined. And that's the table. Again, this sign right here is the most important part. Zero, one half, rat two over two, rat three over two, one. And once you get that, you just flip it for cosine and then tan is sine over cosine. There's actually one more part of the table, and that is that's very, very important, and that is what we'll talk about more about in a second. And that is all students take calculus. This is a positive sign chart. I don't need that anymore. Sign different way. <laughs> Not that sign. This lets you know where stuff's positive. So like in quadrant one, they're all positive. In quadrant two, only sign is. So if you notice up here, the y values are positive. Sign values are positive. The other thing's negative. Quadrant three, both values are negative. But tan would be the ratio, so that makes it positive. So only tan's positive in quadrant three. And then quadrant four, if you notice, only the x values are positive. So only cosine is positive. So a short way to no memorize that, we just put A all students take calculus. There's actually a lot, there's a lot of different ways, mnemonics for that, also it trolls crawl or whatever you want to do. Also you take calculus is kind of the math standard one. Again, we'll talk more about that in a second when we actually start doing some of these problems. But that's the chart. Before we move on, I'm going to show you my way, which requires triangles and where, and where we get these values from. So again, I don't care which way you do it. A lot of people, half the people like the chart, half the people like the, the triangle. It makes it kind of confusing. But... If you're like, this chart thing makes sense, hopefully, then you just use that. I'm going to do it both ways in a second. The way I do it with the triangles also requires memorization. So if I'm doing the triangle way, I, ha I still have to memorize. The, the main difference here is that you have to memorize the triangles. So if you remember from geometry, there's three special tri there's two special triangles. There's a 30-60-90 triangle and a 45-45-90 triangle. I'm going to treat it separately. I'm going to treat it like there's three different triangles. For me, there is a 30 triangle. There's a 60 triangle. Again, I know they're the same triangle, but th for our purposes, it helps if you look think of them as different triangles. And it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So, if we're doing this, right? So 30 degrees, opposite 30, 30 is small. 30 is the smallest angle you have here. Opposite 30 is one. Hypotenuse is, two and it's actually always two and if you remember from trig what's your remaining side is rad three 
But for the key for me here, guys, is 30. Understand that 30 is small, right? So you get, it gets the one. Opposite 30 is one. 60 is big, on the other hand. It's a big number. So 60 gets the rad three. Hypotenuse is two, and the adjacent side is one. How about 45, 45, 90? Well, if you remember, these are, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. These are isosceles. So it's like one and one. And the hypotenuse is radical two. Again, this is straight from geometry. If you remember that, you're going to be good. How do, what, here, what are some tricks? So again, if you want to do the triangle way, now this is actually something you should know anyway. 36, 90 triangles are stuff you should know. But if you're going to do this way, it, you have to know these, you have to have these down pat. You have to know what 30, 30 is one, rad 32. 60s rad 3, 1, 2, 45 is 1, 1, rad 2. There's a couple of tips and tricks I use. So again, you have to know 30 is 1. It's small, right? And they have to know 60 goes to rad 3. And here's a, here's a couple more tricks. Hypotenuse is always 2. Always. If you notice, that's a 2, that's a 2, that's a 2. It's a radical 2, and I'll explain that in a second, but it's a 2. The 2 always goes in hypotenuse. Always. Now, what's with the radical 2? Well, there's always one radical. Right over here, it's 1, 2, rad 3. Oh, it has to be the rad 3. 1, 2, rad 3. It's a rad 3. 1, 1, rad 2. Right? So if, if 1 and 1, I need a radical there, so rad 2. So those are the tricks I use. I just remember 30 is 1, 60, 30 is small, so it gets to 1, 60 is big, so it gets to rad 3. Hypotenuse is always 2, and then there's always one radical. So again, that's the way I do it. Again, if you're having a hard, if you, if you have a hard time memorizing those triangles, do, do the table way. Right? And again, I'm going to do both ways in a second, but that's the way that works. So if you're doing a triangle way, it's really just knowing the triangles and, of course, Sokotoa. That's the one difference. The difference between the table way and the triangle way to memorize the unit circle is triangle way, you have to memorize the triangles. Table, you have to memorize how to draw the first column of a table. So again, I don't care what you do, I'm going to do it both ways. So let's get into doing this. So how do we evaluate a trig function? Now, my notes are a little messed up here. Let's, let's do sine of 45. Now, this is the first step of doing this, always, is right here. Now, this is the triangle way, but it works for both. Is you got to draw the angle. You have no quadrants in. This is why we spent so much time in the last class of drawing the angle. Very first step is draw the triangle. So, you got to know what quadrants in. So, I'm going to draw a little triangle here. 45 degrees, 0, 90. 45 degrees is the first quadrant. So, that's where I'm at. So, you have to know that part. You know what quadrant you're in. So, if this is 45 degrees, that makes this 45 degrees. So that's the first step. That should be 45. Right? Now, if I'm doing the triangles, which I'll show you next, once I do that, how do we do the triangle method? It's this. If I if it's 45, I know what the sides are. So again, 45 degree triangle is 1, 1, radical 2. What do I do next? Sokotoa. So we're doing sine. So sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse 1 over rad 2 that's it that's literally it you draw your triangle in the right spot it's going to be one of these special triangles that we should that you have to memorize and then once you know that so once you have that you know the sides and then you do sokotoa that's the triangle method now i'll tell you right now it's actually a little quicker with the table method once you draw the table so with sine of 45 in the table method well here's 45 here's sine it's rad 2 over 2 those are the same numbers by the way i know it's a little funky that's this rad two, rad 2 over 2 is this, this rationalized. If you rationalize this, you get rad 2 over 2. Again, I don't care about rationalization. No one does anymore. But they're the exact same thing. So that's it. The triangle method is draw the triangle, know what the angles are, fill out the sides, so go toa. Table method is draw the table. Oh, 45, rad 2 over 2. So let's do another one. Let's do cosine of pi over 6. It's supposed to be a 6. 
So part, cosine of pi over 6. So first step, no matter what, is draw this, right? I don't care which way you're doing it, you got to draw this. Pi over 6, now remember, anytime it's a 1 on top with radians, it's in quadrant 1. So it's be over here somewhere. And if we know pi over 6, it should be a 30 degree triangle. So if, again, if I'm doing a triangle method, I go straight down to the that. If I'm doing triangle method, I should have my size memorized. 30 is small, it gets to 1. Hypotenuse is always 2, and that makes this rad 3. So good, Toa. So, so, ga, toa, ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, rad 3 over 2. Again, that's a triangle method. Using the table, pi over 6 is right here, it's 30 degrees, and then I want cosine, rad 3 over 2. Again, triangle is actually faster if you know, if you have it made already, like, oh, rad 3 over 2, it's just there. Okay, let's go, let's go to the top for now. It's the next one. Cosine of 240. And actually, before we do that, I'll get back to cosine of 240. I'll put it right here. Don't forget. Before we do that, oof. Let's do 10 of 120. So 10 of 120. So again, no matter what you do, first step is draw it. So here's 0, here's 90, here's 180. 120 is in between these two. Now in this case, it's going to be a little different. Now, let me do triangle with the first, right? So I'm going to go straight down. You always go straight down. Find the reference angle. Sound familiar, right? 20, 180, there are, those are 60 apart. So that's a 60 degree triangle right there. Now again, if we have our triangles memorized, that's 60. it's hard to read that to 60. Opposite 60 is radical 3 because it's big. Hypotenuse is always 2. And then the adjacent side is 1. Now there's a little difference here. Remember we talked about earlier? If you go up, you're positive. If you go to the left, though, this is a negative. You went to the left, so it's a negative. So if I want to do tan, toa, tan is opposite over adjacent. So rad 3 over negative 1, or just negative rad 3. So that's how you do the triangle method. Draw it, find the angle. We should know the sides by then. Opposite over adjacent. Now, this is where the the chart method gets gets a little more fun. So I have tan. It was a sixty degree triangle, so right here, and right here it says radical three. How do I get the negative? Well, remember our picture was like this. All students take calculus, and our picture we drew was right there. We we're in quadrant two. In quadrant two only sign is positive all the rest are negative that's why it's a all students take calculus and quadrant two s is positive the rest is neg the rest are negative i had tan so that's why it was a negative three so negative rad three okay let's do cosine 240 and this one i do only in the only using the chart just to show you how it works so again, I got to draw 0, 90, 90 is up there. I could count 180, 270, 360. 240 is in here somewhere. And this is why it's so important to draw the chart. So I'm mean, sorry, to draw the picture no matter what. Here's 240. I got another reference angle. They're 180, 240. They're 60 apart. Right now, if I'm doing the chart, hopefully all you have to do is once you get a table, you make a chart once. That's it. Right? You just go, okay, boom, boom. Boom. Like you to get, if I give you a quiz or a test, you just make it once and you refer back to it. You gotta know how to make it though. No cheese seats in this class. So this would be 0, 30, 45, 60, 90. Right, the way we draw it, it's where we build it again, just because it's super important. Sign starts small, 0. 1 half, rad 2 over 2, rad 3 over 2, then 1. Again, once you get that, that's the hard part. The rest of it's easy, right? Start, start small, 0, then 1 half, then 2 over 3, then 3 over 3, three, three 1 half, two, rad 2 over 2, rad 3 over 2, then 1. For cosine, you just slip it. So now it's 1, rad 3 over 2, rad 2 over 2, 1 half, and then 0. 
10 is the sine of a cosine, so 0 over 1 is 0. That, the 2's cancel out, you get 1 over red 3. These are the same, so you get 1. The 2's cancel out, you just get red 3. And then you can divide, so fine. Right, so I built it. Again, hopefully when you make it, when you do a quiz test for homework, you just do it once and you can just refer to it. All you gotta do is build it once and you're good. How do I use cosine of 240? Well, it's 60 degrees. So 60 is right there and we're doing cosine, so it should be one half. Now I guess I make sure it's positive or negative. So what do I do for that? All students take calculus. Probably just go down right here. Anyway, we're in quadrant three. In that quadrant, that's T, that stands for tan. That means only tan is positive. So I have cosine, so my answer is negative. Negative one half. That's the chart method. Again, if you're doing if you're doing triangles, it would have been negative red three, negative one and two, and then cosine is this over this. That's the idea. Okay, let's do some let's do some trig ones, some radian ones. Now again, my Looks a little messed up right there. I apologize. So sine of three fourths, three pi over four. Sorry. So three pi over four. The key thing here is how to draw it, how to graph it. Okay? Because remember, no matter what you do, you have to graph it. So we spent a lot of time on this before. This is pi, three pi over four. The trick is make this four over four. So if we're going this way, I haven't reached four over four yet. I'm a little short. I'm actually right here. That's three pi over four. If I'm doing it the triangle way, over four is 45. I have to have that thing memorized. So one, negative one, radical two. Remember it's negative because I went to the left. It's one and one because it's 45. All right, and again, negative is important because it went to the left, it's negative. Going up is positive. This is always positive. So sine is so. So opposite of hypotenuse, one over rad two. Triangle method. It's so a pi over four, so uh, I don't have it right there. Here's pi over four, sine rad two over two. Then is it positive or negative? We were in quadrant two. Hey, we're positive because the only thing that's positive there is sine. Ten of five pi over three. Again, the key thing here is this: the, could you draw it? Could you draw it? If you could draw it, you're going to be home free. So zero pi. Where is, so the trick here is again, make this three over three. Now that's three over three, I need to get to five. Remember one less is two, one more is four. So I'm not there yet, I gotta go around again. I went here, gotta go around again. You just add another three over three and that gets you six over three, also known as two pi. One less is five. One more is seven. So that's wrong, I'm quadrant four. If I'm doing this the chart way, pi over three is right here. So tan would be radical three. And all you gotta do is the positive or negative, right? All students take calculus, only cosine's positive. So my tan here should be negative rad three. That's the chart. Triangle, you have to memorize that over three is 60. You have to memorize that anyway. Opposite 60, 60 is big, is radical 3. Hypotenuse is always 2, and this is 1. We're going down, so that has to be negative. This one's always positive, and we went to the right. 10 is Toa, opposite over adjacent. And that's the gist of this. I'll do a couple more to make sure we got it, and I'll do one that's a couple that are different, but that's the general idea. Okay, so let's do let's do secant at one twenty, and then we'll do talk about a couple of special ones, and then we'll be out of here. Secant of one twenty, so zero, one eighty, ninety, one twenty is in here somewhere. Again, I always got to draw it and find the reference angle. So in this case, one twenty, one eighty is sixty degrees. Seeking the key thing here is this what's it reciprocal of and that is cosine So this is gonna be one over cosine Whatever I get for cosine you just flip it If I'm doing a triangle method 60 
is big, it's rad 3. Hypotenuse is 2 always. And then this is 1, but you went to the left, so negative. Cosine is ka. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine is negative 1 half. That makes secant the flip of that, so negative 2 over 1. Or just negative 2. Again, works the same thing with the table. We're doing 60 degrees for cosine. So here's 60, here's cosine 1 half, and we were in quadrant 2. So only sine was positive, so it makes cosine negative. And then you just flip it. Again, that's just a general idea. I don't care how you do it, either do a table or you do a or you do triangles, but you gotta know you gotta practice one way. Okay, let's talk about some things that are kind of special. Let's do two more and then we're pretty much done. We're gonna do sine of pi and we're gonna do we'll do cosine of three pi over two. So sine of pi. As always, we gotta draw it. Here's zero, here's pi. Sine is right here. I mean, sorry, pi is right there. Right, so how do I do it? I can't draw a triangle. This is a non-triangle. This is called a, remember, called a quadrantal angle. It means it falls on the line. That changes the game if you're doing a triangle. If you're doing a table, it doesn't change it that much, but it does change it. So how do we do this if it falls on that? Well, first let me do the table. So, zero, let me go up here actually, probably it's a little better. So, zero is right here. So, right now we're at pi, which is over there. Anytime you go to the opposite side, you negate it. So, if you're up, so it's like, I don't, see, I don't have pi, pi's not on this list. But if it's on the opposite side, you just make it a negative. So, that will be negative zero, which is still zero, negative one, and negative zero, which is still zero. Same thing, how we have pi over 2's right here. But it doesn't have 3 pi over 2. If you need to get 3 pi over 2, you just negate it. So you just make it negative. So that's how you do it with the chart. So I'm like, okay. Sine of 0. On the chart, sine of 0 is 0. So this one's going to be negative 0, which is just 0. To make this sign make it more interesting. Um, that's a, that's why I do it. That's the chart way. How about if you have what if, if we're doing a triangle, right? Well, if you're doing a triangle, you do this. It's a unit circle. You went left one to negative one zero. It's a normal graph, guys. Here's x. Here's y. It's a unit circle. We went left one negative one zero. And if you remember, sine e, sine is zero. That's the idea. Look at this one right here. Sine of 3 pi over 2, I changed it a little bit. Where's 3 pi over 2 at? Right here. So again, if I'm doing the chart, the chart doesn't have 3 pi over 2, but it does have 2 pi. Right? 90 degrees has 2 pi. So if I'm doing sine, sine of 2 pi is 1. So sine of 3 pi over 2 is the opposite of that, negative 1. So using the chart, this would be negative one. Because we don't have we don't have three pi over two, but we do have two pi. And the chart says sine of two pi is one. So the opposite side would be negative negative one. If I'm doing the table, again, if I'm doing the triangle, I can't draw a triangle there. It's a, it's on the line. You stop. And you have to go, okay, that's a point. We're doing the unit circle. And the unit circle right there, you just went down one to normal point. If you go down one. It's zero, negative one. Like this is one zero. You go up one, zero one. You go to the left one, negative one zero. So I went down one, and now we're doing sine, sine e. So sine's y value, negative one. That's that's the idea. Like, you know, I know it's a lot to take in. I'm actually gonna stop a little early because I just think it's a lot to take in. But we're gonna practice this in class. And hopefully by the end, we'll, you'll have a method you prefer and know how to do it with.